Hey guys, DB right here, and today I am continuing with what if Bulma became a Z warrior. And um, first of all, we got to wrap up a slight inconsistency problem that I accidentally created in the last video. Uh, that was the sudden reemerge of Piccolo, because if you recall, back um, earlier in the story, King Piccolo was sealed away successfully by the Mafu Bar, and um, I suddenly had um, it revealed in the previous part that Kami and Piccolo did a Namekian infusion. But how could that happen if he's sealed away by the Mafu Bar? So, hopefully, and thank you, Kerry, for pointing that out. I was supposed to fill that in in the last part, but I just completely forgot about it as, as I was making the video. So I do apologize, but we're going to fix that now. While young Kami went back to his um, duties of guarding, of being the guardian of Earth, he um, pretty much realized that sensing the um, dangerous threat that was Cell, he and Mr. Popo went searching for the electronic jar that Roshi and the gang sealed King Piccolo in. And since Kami pretty much knows everything that goes on in this planet, he pretty much knows exactly where to find that jar. And, pretty, and he opens it. And because Kami is a lot stronger than his original counterpart, he's able to um, easily... easily apprehend him and... Do the um, Namekian fusion ritual and regain his um, lost self. Now, you might be thinking because um, King Piccolo is very weak, it wouldn't have made a much of a different, much of a power boost. You're actually wrong. Because remember that the nameless Namekian was technically a super Namek back before they, they split up. So... It would actually make sense that if they merged, the power-up would be virtually the same. And it pretty much is, especially when Kami had his latent potential unlocked by Guru back in the back when we covered the Namek arc. So it basically made up the difference anyhow. So back with that in mind, we're, with that in mind, and going back to where we um, last left off. With um, both Gohans emerging from the Room of spirit and, spirit and Time, it was now time for the Cell Games. Ten days had come and gone, and well, much like in the original, Hercule loses and his pupils lose out to Cell relatively quickly. However, Bulma has no intention of playing by the rules here, and basically suggests that everyone just basically team up against Cell. Okay, if you really want to rush your demise, I have no problem with that. However, I know something you don't know. And Perfect Cell basically creates um, a bunch of Cell Juniors, and you pretty much got a glorified riot on your hands. So it's um, a bunch of Cell Juniors taking on the Dragon Team, and um, Perfect Cell does engage with um, some of the fighters who do approach him and try and get a shot in, like Goku and Vegeta. But mostly, the Cell Juniors are doing all the work. And um, needless to say, it's not really looking good for our heroes. Not very good at all. Being toyed with by these things. And, you know, I guess... Eventually, Bulma did have to have a bad idea, and that was definitely a bad idea. But, Bulma is able to hold her, out, hold her own against Cell Juniors, thanks to Dr. Giroud giving her an infinite energy supply, just like 17 and 18. And, um, well, Goku, Vegeta, and future Gohan are definitely powerful enough to keep these um, cells at bay. bay. And... Young Kami, or Kamikolo, is doing, you know, almost as well. After all, he's an experienced warrior in his own right. And, um, well, as things sort of begin to get a little bit more desperate, and it starts becoming obvious that the Dragon Team is definitely losing energy, while Cell hasn't taken any damage whatsoever at this point, and, um, Perfect Cell at this point is getting bored. Okay, children, that's enough playtime. You can kill them all now. 
I am very disappointed in you lot. I would have thought you would have made this more of a challenge. Oh well, I guess you just don't care about your planet. And well... Needless to say, the Cell Juniors are basically are about to get serious when suddenly Android 16 comes out of nowhere and grabs Cell in a bear hug much like he does in the original. Now, I think you know where I'm going with this here. I have you now, Cell. No matter how powerful you are, you will not survive this blast. I'm going to blow myself up and take you with me. And, um, Cell is definitely worried here. This is not what Cell had in mind. And, um, you're probably thinking there's no bomb in Android 16, right? Right? Wrong. Remember, because Bulma was able to learn a lot from Dr. Giro being um, his prisoner for all that time while he worked on her, made her into an android and everything like that. She was better at um, reprogramming Android 16 than what she was in the original timeline. So because she trusted her own programming skills and plus with what she learned from Dr. Giro, this actually meant that she trusted Android 16 more and decided it might have been might be best to keep this bomb as a last resort to use against Cell. And needless to say, this is basically their last resort at this point. So the explosion actually goes off and Cell is um supposedly destroyed. And this sends the Cell Juniors um in a state of basic complete disarray, not having their parent around to basically control them, or, um, basically, yeah, they're not sure what to do at this point. It's like, you know, they're literally basically just a bunch of lost children. And this is where the Dragon Team take advantage of that, and pretty much take down the Cell Juniors one by one. And they're basically able to do that. And they think, victory is done, we've won, it's over, woohoo, we can go home now. Except, now suddenly, they are sensing that the winds are changing, there's this sudden burst of power, um, this smog business happening, and, um, well, suddenly, a freezer-like death beam comes firing out of the, um, smoke, and basically pierces Goku, killing him stone dead. Of course, this is Perfect Cell, and he's pretty much got the same sort of Zenkai boost that he got in the, got from when he um, blows himself up in the original. Except, as we know, it was 16 that did that. So, basically, we've got Super Perfect Cell now, at his um, full power, like, as we get towards the end of this battle. And, well... The sudden death of Goku has set off present-day Gohan's latent abilities. He... He is a... You are making him so mad! And, well... Gohan gets that raw power-up, and we basically get an all-out battle between present-day Gohan and Perfect Cell. And it's, it's a lot like um, Goku versus Freezer on Namek, like, from the um, original story. It's an all-out, brutal slugfest. And they're both weary, they're both weak and injured, and it does come down between the two of them battling each other with a final Kamehameha beam struggle. And even with the others assisting with the beam struggle, it doesn't seem like... Um, that um, present-day Gohan is going to win. But however, remember, there is a future Gohan there as well who just who is feeling the same pain as the other one did. Now remember, future Gohan has already lost his father due to the heart virus from his timeline. And now he's just witnessed this monstrous villain kill his father right in front of him. And well, it may have hit him a bit slower than present-day Gohan because... In a way, future Gohan sort of used to seeing death, because everyone he cared about from his timeline was killed by Android 17 and 18. So, Gohan, after sort of 
becoming reacquainted or what it's like to feel that kind of loss, he starts surging with power as well and achieves a latent potential transformation that's even stronger than present day Gohans. And with an angry Kamehameha adding to his um, present day counterparts, Cell is basically wiped out from planet Earth and all his cells are destroyed this time. Perfect Cell is dead. No more of this coming back, getting stronger nonsense. He is gone. And out of our hair. And well, with that, everyone is basically tired and going along and congratulating themselves on a battle well fought and whatnot. Vegeta doing his whole, I'll never fight again. How could you leave me like that, Kakarot? Um, Vegeta, um, Goku hasn't been killed yet in this timeline. Still worry, we can get Dragon Balls and bring him back. No problem, which is exactly what they do. Goku choosing to actually come back this time. After all, he can. He hasn't been killed yet in this series. So, with, with that basically in mind, everyone's able to um, basically return to um, a life that is completely at peace. Future Gohan goes back to his timeline and kills Android 17 and 18 and manages to um, find his mother in his timeline, you know, searching Dr. Giro's lab. So, Android Bulma is now a part of um, future Gohan's timeline, and what will that lead to in the future? Who knows? But first, the both of them do take care of um, the cell, the imperfect cell that's running around his timeline, and they get rid of him, much like Future Trunks does in the original. And, well... Basically, with that, we head into basically the um, seven-year time skip. Gohan is starting high school, even though he, in a way, doesn't really need to, being educated by Bulma, Capsule Corp, and all that. But Gohan decided that he wanted to give high school a try and, you know, give socializing with um, other people his age. After all, he can't keep hanging around with martial artists all the time. So, Bulma was um, quite happy to um, oblige this. So, he is enrolled with, at Orange, um, Orange Star High School and pretty much meets Videl, much like the original counterpart does. And, um, yeah, well, does the whole Great Saiyan Man thing happen? Well,. Yes, because with all the crime that goes on in Orange Star City, it basically means that, yeah, Gohan has to find some way to um, stop the criminal element in the city without revealing his identity and the whole Super Saiyan thing. Now, as for Hercule taking credit for what the Dragon Team did... There was no way, really, that Hercule could really do that, because the whole thing was just a straight-up brawl. So, in a way, Hercule's not quite as famous as he is in the original timeline, hence why Orange Star City is still called Orange Star City. He's still famous because, you know, he is the World Martial Arts Champion, but, yeah, he's, he hasn't been granted, you know, as the Earth's saviour or anything like that. So... I guess this still keeps him sort of in Videl's good books. Like, he's not overly obnoxious with the fame, like he isn't, or as much as he is, like, in the original. And, um, so, basically. Now, has, um, little Goten been born? Yes, of course he has. Of course, Bulma being his mother as well. Now, Goten looks pretty much like he does in the original and he does have his dad's hair to boot so black spiky hair just like original Goten except much like um his big brother he's getting quite the education at Capsule Corp so he's um quite smart and always happy to help Bulma out with um tinkering and everything like that and thanks to um 
Bulma's, I guess you could say, technological upgrades, courtesy of um, the late Dr. Giraud, she's actually found a way that she might be able to introduce, introduce key-powered automobiles. But that's something for another time. Because I think this is where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this story, and I hope I was able to fix that little inconsistency that I accidentally caused. And um, I hope, I'm, hope it, I was able to make it in a way that works, that makes you guys happy. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys again next time as, I, as we continue this marathon story. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do a video tomorrow, or um, at least until Christmas is over. But if I can somehow squeeze one in, I will try. Alright, thank you guys for sticking around, and I will catch you guys next time.